to, to be better in that regard? All the steps, um, just timing, trust, all that stuff, um, just to make those plays and execute them like he's saying. For you, um, the question was asked by Arthur earlier, it's like, do you have to talk to Drake about lack of targets in the last couple of games? Is that something that you have to talk to him about? He said no, that you understand how yeah. the game is played. Is that something that you feel like is accurate that he said that? Yeah, I don't, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm a rookie. Like, you know, I'm still trying to get my feet wet. I'm still trying to learn the game and all. Um, so, you know, them running the ball a lot um, and then passing it a few times, it still has helped me a lot. So I'm not saying that, you know, but um, yeah. At the same time, you know, I'm not worried about that. Yeah. You know, I'm just trying to get my feet wet at the end of the day and uh, trying to do what's right for the team overall. To that end, I mean, this is a, a team that it's not necessarily a pass 45 times in a game type yeah. of offense. Is that something as a pass catcher that you're content with? Um, it's just how the game is played at the end of the day, you know. Um, I came from an offense where they threw out I don't know how many times a game, you right, know. So yeah. this is a little bit, a little bit different. But um, it's my job now. Something I got to do. I'm not mad at it at all. Um, I'm just waiting for my opportunities, and when they come, I'm trying to make the best of it. Has that been? I mean, it's been. How has that been as an adjustment? It's been fine. I mean, I'm playing football for a job now. I can't be more excited than that. So if I have to block more than usual, I'm gonna do it. You know, it's what's best for this team, not what's best for me. You know. Well, I mean, just like like you said, you played in a USC offense and threw the ball yeah. a ton. I'm just wondering how like mentally you adjust to that. Right, job or not, I just don't. Yeah. It's a different role. I mean, obviously, it's a different role. Um, but at the same time, everything is so – you get everything so few in the league, right? You're not out there, you know, again. Like, I mean, some people are, but you're not getting 15, 16 right. targets or catches a game, 20 targets a game, you know what I'm saying? So, um, at the end of the day, I'm just trying to do my job, do what's best for this, this club, what's best for the teammates and all that. To that end, is it almost like, hey, if I get five targets, I got to make the best of this, these moments, because I know they're not going to come at an exponential rate. Does that almost kind of go into your head as well? Yeah, I, I, a little bit, but I think that on every play as well, because you don't ever know when we're, we're going to break somebody out like Avery, Tyler, any of them. So um, it, it's that for every play, but yes, definitely make them on the passing plays too. It's kind of that. I guess glass half empty of what Tori just asked though. Is it tough to stay in a rhythm, get in a rhythm when there is, when there aren't that many passing plays at all? I mean, as somebody who hadn't run routes and caught mm. balls, is it tough to you know stay in or get in a rhythm? Uh, I wouldn't say not for me at least. I mean, it could be for other guys, but not for me. Uh, I'm out there playing football, and when I'm out there playing football, I'm glued into what we're doing. So uh, I try to execute in, in all my plays, whether it's blocking or running routes. I know we've asked you in a couple of different ways. You get off to such a, a fast, hot start to the season. The numbers in the last game have been, you know, haven't been quite to that level. Frustrating at all, or is it really just, hey, it's a job. Show up, do what they ask me to do. It's a job. You got to show up, and I'm a rookie right now, you know. So um, I got to go through all this. I got to go. I got to go through all everything um, and just getting my feet wet, like I said before you know so that's what I'm trying to do and, and I think I'm doing a well job of it. when you see this uh, secondary how beat up it is I know you go against them every day in practice and what do you see about like, from some of these guys who you're talking about getting your feet wet they're getting their feet wet too yeah. how do you feel like this secondary is kind of coming along this week considering how many of them had to play this past Sunday or, yeah, past Sunday. yeah well I sit by a lot of them you know <laughs> right. so um, they're close-knit family and um, I believe in all of them. Um, I go against some of the some of the best guys, you know. So at the end of the day, I have all my faith in them, and um, they're getting their feet wet just like me. And like I said before, I think I'm doing a good job, and I think they're doing a good job as well with that. Uh, is that treating you a little bit differently after the fast start? Because we saw you come out of the gates good, and then uh, are you getting a little bit more heavier treatment? Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, I wouldn't say it's hard to tell. I just. <laughs> <laughs> you funny. Uh, I would say it's hard to tell. Um, you know, it's, it's just how the game has been going, the flow of the game. We've been running people through people's faces, and we're going to keep on doing that until they stop us. <laughs> Yeah, so that's, the, uh, you know, the passing game. How do y'all, you know, try to ramp it up or get it going? Um, oh, my gosh, that's eight That's probably a, a question for Coach Art, you know, okay. how, to, how to get that going. And all I can say for that is just be on our P's and Q's as, as wide receivers and QB's. And he said y'all keeping y'all um, 
your mindset right. Don't be pouting like, you know, maybe Rick breaking the rough out shorter and messing up spacing. But he said he, he knows he's got the good guys that are going to be there when, when, when y'all do get it to open. Yeah, just our opportunities. we got to make the best of them. And uh, as I said earlier, just that trust and, and discipline in our routes, execution, all that stuff, it's going to go a long way. Just stay on top of that yep. no matter what weather you're involved or not. Yep, exactly, because it helps other people out. There's a lot of routes that help clear out other people, so you gotta you got to be on that too. Yeah, it's a crazy atmosphere. Uh, nothing like it in college football. Um, other other teams and stuff might split the stadium, but when they split half red and half blue, you know it's going to be a fight, and you know the fans are going to stay engaged the whole game up until we kick them, kick the blue guys out of there. So uh, we've got Kyle Pitts here, who's a, a Gator. Yeah. Uh, you guys having some trash talk? What's the uh, what's it been like in here? It's not too much trash talk going on, you know. Surprisingly, so I will always talk trash for my dogs, but. I mean, I, I feel like they, they kind of have an understanding this year that Bulldogs run it. What are, what's your expectations for this team and, and just the, I don't know, do you have a, a score prediction or anything like that or who you want to see go off? It's hard to make score predictions in this one because you know it's always going to be a battle. Uh, a big rivalry game, um, everybody's going to play their best, but dogs on top, always. So there's a lot of people talking about eliminating the neutral site factor of Florida Georgia. Do you have an opinion on that? Whatever Coach Smart says. <laughs> Whatever he says goes. <laughs> what would you think about the players playing in Gainesville and then them coming to Athens? I actually think that would be nice. Like I that getting a chance to go play in Gainesville and play in the swamp and then having them come to Athens. I feel like that would be a good opportunity for both sides. Any worry that there's going to be a little look ahead to Tennessee next week, considering that's what the East is going to come down to? No, no, no way. <laughs> it's Florida. It's Florida week. Um, they got to take care of one team at a time. And I mean, I, Kirby, I'm sure he has them riled up, ready to play Florida. What's your favorite memory from that rivalry? Um, I say just emptying the stadium, uh, having. Having the stadium turn from half red, half blue to just all red and just hearing the fans go crazy and sending them home with a loss. What's it been like with Coach? Uh, he's a Tennessee guy. Um, do you guys have any conversations yet about it at all? He's a Tennessee guy. Smith was talking about there's a lot of Tennessee fans out there. Oh, man. Nah, I, I feel like right now everybody's all Georgia. Um, and the Tennessee guys, they're kind of sitting behind, just waiting, to, waiting hoping to, that they get a chance to come beat us. Yeah, no, I think as a group, man, it's it's a great group of men, you know, and, and Tyler's taking advantage of his opportunity that was presented to him. Obviously, CP started out really hot and then uh, had his injury, you know, and then, again, all those guys are preparing as if they're the starter every week, every day, and their whole thought process is just how they can continue to grow and just continue to help this team win games. And a kid like Caleb who, uh, you know, uh, was undrafted and stuck around and makes the team, how is he uh, – been helping you out here uh, early on. Yeah, Caleb's doing a great job too, preparing every week for his opportunities, you know, and, and the packages of things that we have for him and that we're going to ask him to do. Um, spending a lot of time with the veteran guys and, you know, just trying to learn from them and uh, taking their experiences so he can obviously help himself when he's out there on Sundays. And lastly, Avery Williams was the last one I wanted to ask. Uh, you know, it was a pretty good succession from, uh, you know, Algier to Caleb and Avery, part of that committee. If I could just finish that question, thank you very much. Uh, how's he doing in his role? Yeah, Avery, again, he has his role. We know how we want to utilize him. I think between Art and uh, Rags and our offensive staff and what he does on special teams, he has a very uh, unique role for us. And so, again, he's doing a great job, um, doing an unbelievable job in the room, just learning. Um, very, very trustworthy guy in a lot of different aspects. And so he's, he's He's continued to grow as well, um, and again, just continue to do whatever he can to help this football team win games. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. How did this all change this week with this loss? Uh, it's hypothetical, to be honest with you. I know you guys get that a lot, but right now we're literally focused on the Carolina Panthers and what we need to do today on Wednesday to put ourselves in the best position to win on Sunday. And then when CP does come back, we'll cross that bridge. We'll figure all that stuff out. But there's no reason to waste any time or energy talking about hypothetical uh, situation. I mean, you're only available every other week, and he's going to be coming back next week. So that, 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 that is a reason to waste some words on it, I think. And I'll be honest, I don't know if he's coming back next week or not. That's Again, that's a question for Art. That's not a question for me. I just know the guys that we have rolling this week, be it Tyler, be it Hunt, 
beat Avery and Keith, I need to make sure that those guys have a great Wednesday practice and that we can go out there and put ourselves in the best position to go win this division game on Sunday. I don't know if the offense changes, but obviously CP is who he is. He's a dynamic football player. So I don't think the offense changes, the scheme doesn't change. Art rags, the way that we're envisioning putting this thing together really doesn't change when CP comes back. I think it's us just, the players, each player doing their 111th, and that's what CP was doing because it was the success of the other 10 guys around him that allowed him to be able to do his job. And that doesn't change when he comes back or if he's or, or when he comes back or if uh, Tyler, Huntley, Avery, or any of those other guys are out there. And that's kind of our mindset is it's not just, hey, this one guy. Um, but obviously, again, he's a hell of a football player. He gives us a, a different dimension um, because of his uh, flexibility as a football player. You know, and so, like I said, but our focus right now truly is just how, what, are we, what do we need to do to prepare on Wednesday to go win this game on Sunday? Yeah, I think that's the beauty of when you have a guy like CP um, is that you do have some flexibility of where you can line some different guys up. Um, again, the game plan changes from week to week um, and how we want to utilize certain guys, tight ends, receivers, different backs. And so, again, Arthur, Rags, our offensive staff, we'll all put that stuff together when it does come to that point when he is back. Um, but like I said, I do think, again, each week we're going to put our guys in the best position to be successful to allow us to win the game on Sunday. Who have you seen emerge as a leader in the back? Keith Smith. I think Keith Smith um, is, a, is a quiet leader amongst not only in our room, but uh, amongst this football team. Shows up to work every single day. Um, does a lot of the grunt work, be it special teams, be it um, blocking, you know, a lot of things that doesn't get, doesn't get a lot of recognition. Um, but he's doing a really good job, especially just with it being a younger room. Just because you see what goes into playing that position, um, and it's a selfless position, and I think he understands that, and that's why he's been able to make the career that he's been able to make for himself, um, because he's a selfless guy. He cares about the team. He wants to help the team in any way possible, um, be it taking reps during scout team for the scout offense. He doesn't care what it is. He just wants to help this team win and be prepared for Sundays. I think the, the patience as a runner is continuing to get better week to week. You know, there's always things that we need to improve on. And him and I had a really good meeting earlier this week. And he, we both noticed some things that we need to do a better job of and get cleaned up to allow ourselves to be better in the run game. Um, but I think that's the best part about that group in general is they all aren't satisfied at any moment of any success that people may think that we're having because it's the constant mindset of how can we get better that growth mindset. Not really, to be honest with you. Um, during the season, it's kind of hard to any spare time to spend any time watching or looking at it, a lot of social media stuff. Um, but I do know he, he's chomping at the bit to get back, and he just wants to get back around his teammates and just, again, like I've said a few different times, just help this team win on Sundays because right now that's our, that's our sole purpose and our sole focus. Is he one of those guys that you'll have a hard time? I think naturally that's all these guys. They wouldn't be at this level if that, if that wasn't their mindset. But I think for us, um, starting with our medical staff, Arthur, we'll have a good plan in place on how we want to approach that with him. Again, that would be something that they would need to ask or they would need to answer because they have a better idea of where he's at and what, what not. You know? But obviously he makes us a better football team when he's on the field. Um, quite a bit because there's a lot of different aspects at the end of the run. You know, obviously the best outcome is getting in the end zone. So you're trying to obviously help prepare them to, to get to the end zone. But I also think, um, you know, the ball security aspect, how to finish a run.
doing a good job of finishing that run going forward and not allowing the defense to push you back. That, that's specifically what I was thinking about. How important is it for guys to get an extra 18 inches or whatever, a yard and a half? Yeah, it no, it's, it's hidden yardage that a lot of people don't talk about because if you hear a defense, defensive coach talk about what do they want to do to a ball carrier or someone that has the ball, they want to push them backwards because they're trying to take away that hidden yardage. And as an offensive coach, you're telling your guys, guys, we want to fall forward because you can steal an extra two or three yards. So instead of it being second and seven, you're sitting there in a situation of second and five, which then for our play caller for Coach Smith, obviously makes it a little bit easier for him to have a little bit more uh, variety in which he can you know, get to in terms of his calls.